Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You are watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday the 19th of October. Amit Shah blames Congress for rise of Naxalism in poll-bound Chhattisgarh. Pakistan court bars arresting exiled former PM Nawaz Sharif. And experts raise concerns China built airport in Nepal may become Ambantota. And now for all the details. India's Home Minister Amit Shah on Thursday accused the Congress of encouraging Naxalism and said incidents of Naxal violence have come down by 52 percent in the nine-year rule of PM Modi's government. Addressing a series of rallies in poll-bound Chhattisgarh, Shah urged the people to bring the BJP to power in the state currently ruled by the Congress, promising that his party will make the entire state free of the Naxal menace. He also hit out at Congress for corruption and poor development in the state. Polling for the 90 assembly seats in Chhattisgarh is scheduled to be held in two phases on November 7th and 17th, with results expected on the 3rd of December. Aapke samne do vikalp hai, ek aur naksalvaad ko badawa dene wali Congress sarkar, aur dusri aur naksalvaad ko samapt karne wali Bharatiya Janata Party ki sarkar, ek aur. करोड़ों गरीबों को गैस, सोचाले, पानी, स्वास्थ्य, अनाज, घर देने वाली भारतीय जनता पार्टी की सरकार और दूसरी ओर करोड़ों रुपया भ्रष्टाचार कर कर दिल्ली दरबार में भेजने वाली कांग्रेस पार्टी की सरकार and a Pakistani High Court on Thursday barred authorities from arresting PML and Supremo and former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif, who is scheduled to arrive back home on Saturday after four years in self-exile. Sharif, who has been wanted in a corruption case, had sought protection from arrest from the court in Islamabad on Wednesday. The 73-year-old politician was disqualified in 2017 by the Supreme Court and became ineligible to hold public office for life after the court's verdict in the Panama Papers case. His return comes ahead of the upcoming elections in Pakistan after the National Assembly was dissolved in August. Moving on, in another case of subjugation of rights of minorities in Pakistan, a Hindu girl identified as Rajita Kohli was kidnapped and forcibly married to her abductor in the Sindh province. Despite her statement at the court expressing a desire to be with her family, the judge decided to send her to Darul Aman, the so-called shelter home. In a recent protest outside the UN office in Geneva, activists had raised concern over the issue of abduction and forced conversion of girls from religious minorities. They blamed it as part of the social engineering by the Pakistani establishment. The forced abductions and forced disappearances, the forced conversions of Sindhi Hindu girls, the various ways of persecution of Sindhi Hindus. Now, the state is sponsoring the bandit gangs and they come, they kidnap people and even when the ransom is given, they're not releasing them. And these, you'll be surprised, these gangs, they come on social media and they chant uh, armies in the bar. So just imagine who's behind that. Well, Nepal's newly inaugurated Pokhara International Airport, built with Chinese help, is shaping up to be an economic albatross and has saddled Kathmandu with debt to creditors in Beijing for years to come. A New York Times report released earlier this week exposed the wrongdoings, highlighting that Beijing, since its inauguration, began declaring that the airport had been part of its Belt and Road Initiative, which Nepal has rejected. The airport has not seen any frequent international flights except for the chartered Chinese flights, which appear on rare occasions. Arun Kumar Subedi, a former foreign relations advisor to Nepal PM, has called for stern government action to prevent the airport from becoming like Sri Lanka's Hambantota port. The community and uh, basically the 
multilateral agency which are our development partners are eyeing on this uh, particular project and the uh, outcome of the project uh, are not that much uh, welcomed by our development partners as well uh, by the analyst of Nepal and uh, from the economic expert as well. So overall the impact uh, of this particular airport in the international community related uh, to Nepal is not that much uh, the positive. Also, Nepali officials have reportedly requested that China convert the loan into a grant due to the airport's financial challenges, a matter discussed during Prime Minister Pushkamal Dahel's visit to Beijing in late September. And Sri Lanka's President Ranil Vikramasinghe on Wednesday said that the debt relief for low-income countries should be part of the green transition and inaction on debt could pose an existential threat to China's Belt and Road Initiative. Speaking during an event in Beijing, Vikramasinghe said Sri Lanka's climate prosperity plan requires investment of $26.5 billion through to 2042 and its roadmap for carbon neutrality needs $100 billion through to 2050. Sri Lanka defaults halted on its foreign debt in May last year after its dollar reserves fell to a point where it could no longer pay for essential imports such as fuel and medicine. Sri Lanka owes Chinese lenders bilateral and commercial around $7 billion. Moving on, the International Monetary Fund on Thursday reached a staff-level agreement with Bangladesh on the first review of a $4.7 billion bailout, which is expected to act as a boost for the cash-strapped economy, which is struggling with low foreign exchange reserves. In a statement, the global lender said, with completion of the first review, subject to IMF board approval in the coming weeks, the bailout package by IMF will make available about $681 million. The authorities have made substantial Financial progress on structural reforms under the IMF supported program, but challenges remain, the statement said. Bangladesh secured $4.7 billion in loans from IMF in January this year, making it the first to secure such funds out of three South Asian countries that applied last year amid economic troubles. And motivated by a personal tragedy, a man in India's Bhubaneswar has taken it upon himself to save lives as he distributes around helmets to people across the country. Take a look. Jolted after the death of his close friend in a road accident in 2014, Raghavendra, known as the Helmet Man of India, has taken upon himself to raise awareness among people about road safety. Since the personal tragedy hit him, Raghavendra has distributed over 56,000 helmets for free. He urges parents to teach their children to wear helmets just as they teach them other things. For motorcycle riders, wearing a helmet is mandatory by law, but is often ignored in some parts of the country. और उसके वजह में मैंने उसी दिन से प्रण लिया था कि भारत के हर नागरिक को मुझे अपना मित्र बनाना है और उसी लिए सड़कों पर हेलमेट लेकर के उतरा हूं और आज जो यहां पर लोगों को दे रहा था जब हेलमेट तो मुझे बिलीव नहीं हो रहा था वो तो मतलब सड़कों पर लेट करके मुझे प्रणाम कर रहे हैं करे सर हमने each year in India, thousands of people die in road accidents due to negligent driving, making road accidents one of the biggest causes of unnatural death in the country. From 2016 to 2021, the number of fatalities stood at 153,972, according to government data. Well, that's all in tonight's edition. We'll see the same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.